Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Traveler Market Bag, which you can see here in front of you as my sample one is built. This is the second market bag in the marvelous market bag crochet along. If uh, you are crocheting along with me and all the details for that can be found in the description of this video. So this is the second market bag. It is a wonderful market bag, has quite a bit of stretch to it, a near solid fabric and a great, great texture. The finished bag is approximately 15 by 16 inches. When it's laid flat, you can adjust the size or the length of the handles if you would like, uh, and I'll let you know how to do that in later on in the video. For the tutorial today, I'm going to be using some 100% cotton yarn. I'm using the Pima Cotton by Lion Brand. It's a worsted weight yarn. There's about 186 yards per ball. For this uh, for this bag, you're going to need three different colors. And I've used two balls of the blueprint color, which will be my color A. One ball of the uh, golden color here, the mineral yellow, and one ball of the color spice. Feel free to mix up the colors as you see fit. You're also going to need a five millimeter crochet hook, as well as several stitch markers uh, for later on in the bag and even in the bottom if you choose. So uh, you can also find the free written pattern on RidgeTexturesCrochet.com. Again, the direct link is there for you in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. If it's your first time here, welcome. Take a look around. There are several other crochet market bag patterns here on this channel as well. The channel is updated weekly with crochet stitch tutorials. Our pattern today is worked in rounds. We're going to start by making our slip knot and then by working a foundation chain of 41 stitches. Once you have chained 41 stitches, we're going to begin working around our foundation chain. So you're not going to join it. And you're going to begin by working one half double crochet into that first stitch and then each stitch all the way across to the, or sorry, into the second chain from your hook and then into each chain all the way across to your final one. Now I'm working in the back bumps of my stitches, but it's really up to you uh, as far as where you would like to work. You just want to work one half double crochet in that second chain and then into each chain all the way across until you have one stitch remaining. Once you've worked half double crochet stitches all the way across, you have one chain remaining. Into this chain, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. This is going to bring you around. So now you have the bottom or underside of your foundation chain facing you. We're now going to continue working half double crochet stitches across uh, working in the opposite side of your foundation chain. So I've worked three into this final stitch, going into the next stitch. I'm just going to work half double crochet stitches once again in each chain all the way across. When you come to your final chain or that final stitch, you're going to work two half double crochet stitches into that final stitch. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 82 half double crochets. Now I'm here at the end of round one. I have one stitch remaining here into this final stitch. 
I'm going to work two half double crochet stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch. We're then ready. Actually, I joined into the chain there. I'm going to switch to the top of the first stitch. We're then going to chain one. Do not turn your work. And we're going to begin round two. For round two, into this first stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. Now, if you would like, uh, you may mark the second half double crochet stitch of that set because each time you come around to the center stitch of the three you're going to be working three stitches into the, each of these and this is going to form our corners so into that second stitch if you would like you can mark it and you're going to come back to it later you're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 38 stitches so it's going to bring us around to our uh, next set of three stitches. One half double crochet in each of the next 38. Once you have worked 38 half double crochet stitches, into your next stitch you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. Again, if you would like, you can mark the middle stitch so the second of the three, uh, which will be your corner stitch going forward. You're then going to work one half double crochet into the next stitch, and then three half double crochet stitches into the next. Again, I'm going to mark that second one of the three for my corner. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 38 stitches. Once you've uh, worked your 38 half double crochets along the other side into your next stitch work three half double crochet stitches if you would like you can mark that second stitch for the corner work one half double crochet into your next stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. That brings you to the end of your round two. For round three, we're going to have uh, chain one, do not turn your work, half double crochet into that first stitch, the same stitch as joining, and then your next stitch should be your marked stitch. Into this stitch, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches. So I can remove, remove my marker, work three stitches, into that next stitch and once again replace the stitch marker if you'd like. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 40 stitches and this should bring you along to your next stitch marker. Once you have worked 40 half double crochets, you're back at your next stitch marker. Into that stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. Replace your marker if you'd like. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. That brings you to your next stitch marker. Into this next stitch, work three half double crochets all into the same stitch. Replace the stitch marker into the second of the three. You're then going to continue around the other side 
and work one half double crochet into each of the next 40 stitches. This should bring you to your next stitch marker. Once you've worked 40 half double crochets and you've reached that next stitch marker, into that next stitch work 3 half double crochet stitches. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next two stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of this round three you should have a total of 98 half double crochet stitches. For round four, do not turn your work, chain one half double crochet into the same stitch as joining and into the next stitch, so into the first two stitches. This brings you to your stitch marker, into that next stitch work three half double crochet stitches, You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 42 stitches. This will bring you across to your next corner marker. Once you've worked 42 stitches and you've come to your next stitch marker, work three half double crochets into that next stitch. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next five stitches. That will bring you to your next stitch marker. Into that next stitch, work three half double crochets. Next, working along the other side, work one half double crochet into each of the next 42 stitches. Once you've worked 42 stitches or an, and are at your next stitch marker, work three half double crochet stitches into that next stitch. You're then going to work one half double crochet in each of the remaining three stitches. And then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. This brings you to the end of round four and at the end of round four you'll have a total of 106 stitches. For round five do not turn your work. Work one half double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Into your next stitch, work three half double crochet stitches. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 44 stitches across to your next stitch marker. Once you've worked 44 half double crochet stitches into your next stitch, work three half double crochets. You're then going to work one half double crochet into each of the next seven stitches. And 
that should bring you to your next corner stitch marker into that next stitch work three half double crochets you're now working along the opposite side again you're going to work one half double crochet into each of the next 44 stitches Once you've worked 44 half double crochet, you're going to work 3 half double crochet into your next stitch. And then 1 half double crochet into each of your final 4 stitches. Join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. That brings you to the end of round 5 and at the end of round 5 you should have a total of 114 stitches. Now for round 6, 7, and 8, so for the next 3 rounds, you're simply going to work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the first stitch, chain one, and work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to leave you to work those three rounds, and then at the end of those three rounds, so at the end of round eight, meet me back here. So work chain one, one half double crochet in each stitch, all the way around, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and meet me back here at the end of round eight. Once you have worked through to round eight, so you've worked three more rounds of half double crochet stitches, this is what the bottom of your bag is going to look like. You're then ready to begin working the sides. So for round one of the sides of our bag, we're going to continue working in our color A and you're going to chain four. This counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one. You're then going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat this all the way around the bottom of your bag. At the end of this round one, you're going to switch to your color B, which I will show you how to do when I arrive back at the first stitch. Once you come all the way around at the end of round one for your bag side, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four. So you've chained one, skipped one, join with a slip stitch into that third chain. And actually when you join, I should go back here a little bit, you're going to um, switch to your color B. So you might have a favorite way of doing that. What I'm actually going to do is insert my hook into that third chain, then drop the color A, pick up the color B, place it on my hook. You can use a slip knot if you'd like as well and then just pull it through. Pull your two little tails tight. Uh, at this time, I'm going to leave my color A attached because I'm going to pull it up along the inside of my bag, uh, as I will show you when I arrive. So once you've joined your color B, you're going to slip stitch for round two into the chain one space. You're then going to chain one and work a long double crochet stitch into the skipped stitch down below. So I've chained one. To work the long double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the skip stitch two rows below, yarn over, and I'm working over the chain one space up above 
yarn over and draw up a loop. And draw it up to the height of a double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two more. You're then going to chain one, skip the next double crochet stitch, and working over top of that chain one and into the skipped stitch two rows below, work a long double crochet stitch. You want to make sure that you're pulling up your double crochets to the proper height because you don't want uh, the stitches to be too tight and kind of uh, pucker up. You're then going to chain one and repeat. Skip the next double crochet, working over top of the chain one space, insert your hook into the skip stitch two rows below and double crochet. Chain one and repeat. You're going to repeat that all the way around where you will end with a chain one and a join into the first long double crochet. And again, you're going to switch colors, this time switching to your color C. As you come around at the end of row two, chain one, skip the next stitch and then slip stitch into the top of your first long double crochet. You're going to switch to your color C at this time. And then just as you did for row two, I would leave the color attached and then slip stitch into the chain one space and chain one. You're then going to begin round three with a long double crochet. This time you're working into the top of the long double crochet two rows below. So insert your hook into the top of that long double crochet two rows below, draw up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. Then chain one, skip the next long double crochet and work a long double crochet into, I guess in this row it's just a regular double crochet, into the next stitch down below. You're going to repeat that all the way around. At some times uh, you might have to kind of pull your stitches apart a little bit to see the double crochet that you need to work in two rows below, but don't worry, it is there and it will straighten out as you work into it. So chain one, long double crochet, skip one, long double crochet into the next stitch, two rows below, repeat that all the way around. When you come back, chain one, skip that next stitch and join with a slip stitch and you're going to switch back to your color A at the end of this round. At the end of round three, you double crocheted into your final double crochet stitch, chain one, join with the slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, but we're going to switch back to our color A, which is conveniently just lying down here. You're going to carefully pull it up and pull it through. Don't pull it too tight. Again, you don't want it to bunch. If uh, you're not a fan of, you will have like little strands of color coming up here on the inside. If you're not a fan of that, you will have to fasten off and weave in your ends at the uh, after each one. Uh, but it is hidden on the inside of your bag and they're not loose or anything. So it might be okay. So you're then going to, once you've started with your color A again, slip stitch into that chain one space chain one and repeat the pattern all over again. So long double crochet into the top of the long double crochet stitch down below. Chain one, skip the next stitch and long double crochet into the next stitch two rows below uh, and repeat. Here again you might find that your tops of your stitches are falling forward or back uh, don't worry, still work into the top of them and they'll straighten out 
as we go. So you're going to continue that all the way around, join with a slip stitch in the first stitch as you have done, switch to your uh, next color, and we're now at the repeat. So we're going to repeat rounds two, three, and four uh, until round 30. Uh, so if I take a look at the other bag, I have worked here to give you an idea. So I have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds that are worked in my color B. Okay, so uh, you're going to have a, ten rounds of each color. You're going to finish off with a round three. So finish off with your color C and you're going to switch back to your color A but then you're going to meet me back here uh, for round 31. So go ahead, repeat these rounds. This is rounds five through to 30, uh, switching colors after each round and then meet me back here. At the end of round 30, so you've worked 10 stripes of each of your colors. You're going to join back your color A and work one final round for uh, of this uh, textured pattern before we get into the top and the handles. So your round 31, you're going to chain one with your color A once again and you're going to half double crochet into the top of the first stitch. You're then going to end in the next chain one space, work your long double crochet into the next stitch, skip stitch two rows below. Half double crochet into the top of the next stitch, and long double crochet into the top of the next. You're going to repeat this all the way around and we're going to close in this pattern of uh, the extended moss stitch that we were working. So half double crochet into the next stitch, long double crochet into the next all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch and continue working in your color A. So this time you can fasten off all your other colors except for the color A and then weave in any ends. At the end of round 31, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that half double crochet and continue working in your color A. We're now ready to work the top of the bag and the handles. So what we're going to do for rounds one, two, and three, so for the next three rounds, chain one with your color A, we're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch, chain one, and work the next round. So you want to work a total of three rounds of half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around, and then meet me back here. Once you have finished that third round of half double crochet stitches, you can then join with a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch, and you're going to fasten off. At this time, you can weave in any ends if you would like, and you're then ready to mark the bag handles. To mark the handles, the placement of the handles, you're going to lay your bag flat on the table in front of you. Uh, and there are multiple ways of doing this. Uh, this was just the easiest way that I found. We want our handles to be even on the side. So what we're going to do, once you've laid it flat on the ground, you're going to mark your two corner stitches. Okay, so mark one. Then you're going to count across the front or the back, it doesn't matter, of your bag, uh, 57 stitches. And you're then going to mark that stitch. So just count across the top. Or 
is 25. Forty, fifty, fifty-seven. That fifty-seventh stitch should be roughly on the opposite side of your bag. You're then going to uh, take another stitch marker and from one of the corner markers on the front of your bag you're going to count in nine stitches and mark that stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mark that stitch. Head over to the other side of your bag from the stitch marker. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and mark that stitch. You should have about 40 stitches in between if you need to adjust uh, because your side ones were off uh, one or two stitches you can but you want about 40 stitches in between your two stitch markers. You're then going to turn your bag over and on the opposite side you're going to count in 10 stitches. So from the stitch marker 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Mark that stitch on the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and mark that stitch. Again, you should have about 40 stitches in between your two stitch markers. If you need to adjust, you can. And looking at the top of your bag, your stitch markers should roughly line up there. You can then remove your two side stitch markers because you don't need them, but leave the other four in place just a little bit longer. You're then ready to begin uh, adding the handles to your bag. So either on the front or the back, um, you're going to start uh, in one of the stitch markers. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm starting in one of the stitch markers here on the left-hand side. And you're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch, just in that marked stitch. Once you've joined your yarn, you're then going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around to the next stitch marker. So half double crochet into each stitch all the way around to the next marker. I am about halfway there. So I'm working the stitches around the side of my bag. Once you come to that next stitch marker, can work one more half double crochet into that marked stitch. You're now on the other side of your bag. We're going to crochet a chain for the handle itself. Now this chain, I'm going to chain 50 chain stitches. If you would like your handles longer, you're going to want to chain more. If you'd like them shorter, you can chain less. Um, just in it's important to note how many chains you work because you want to work the same on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and work 50 chains. I'd keep them fairly loose because you're going to be working into them later. There's 25. 
40. Fifty. Once you've worked your 50 chains, you're going to skip on the top of your bag, skip the 40 chains in between your two stitch markers, and work a half double crochet into the next marked stitch. So I'm skipping all 40 of those stitches in between the two marked stitches, and working a half double crochet into that marked stitch. You're then going to, you can remove your stitch marker now, you're then going to half double crochet into each stitch all the way across the side until you reach your next marker. When you come to your next stitch marker, work a half double crochet into that same stitch. And then just as you did for the other handle, you're going to work a chain. Now I chained 50, if you adjust it, you'll have to adjust that number. So chain 50. Keeping it loose so that you can work into it later. Twenty five, forty, and fifty. Once you've worked your fifty chains, once again you're going to skip those forty stitches in between your two stitch markers. And here you're simply going to join with a slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet stitch. And that brings you to the end of round one where we've laid the groundwork for our handles. Now for round five of our bag handles. So we have our chains here. You're going to chain one you're going to half double crochet into each half double crochet stitch and each chain stitch. So I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around here to my chain. Once you come to your chain, you're going to work one half double crochet into each chain stitch. Now, if you find it easier or would like, you are just welcome to work 50 half double crochets into uh, the chain space around the foundation chain, uh, or you can work it as I am and just work one half double crochet in each chain stitch. Once you come across, you're going to continue working your half double crochet stitches 
uh, around the side and then work the other handle. When you come back to your first half double crochet stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of that stitch. At the end of round five, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. And then there's only three rounds left in your travel or market bag. You're simply going to chain one, half double crochet into that first stitch, and then into each stitch all the way around. Join with the slip stitch in the top of the first stitch, chain one, and then work your next round. You're going to do a total of three rounds of half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around join with a slip stitch and then uh, fasten off, weave in your ends and your traveler market bag is complete. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.